What's going on guys, CryptoHoy here, and in this video I want to do a quick follow up on Love Hate Inu, it's been about 72 hours since it was first launched, and looking at here at the graph, it doesn't look very nice, it doesn't look appealing at all, it has been going down um, ever since it has been launched, yes there were a little bit of a uh, pump, you know, but uh, you know, it didn't last very long, it was very short lived, and now the price is at 0 0.00011, okay? So pretty much 0 0.00115, which is basically right now the price of stage five, okay? So we look at here, stage five, uh, this is basically the same price, okay? At 0 0.00115 okay which is pretty much more or less where we're at right here and one thing that i i tend to hear what happens uh, a lot not just with love a inu or impact token and a whole bunch of other ones because there's so many like uh, pre-sales there's so many like meme tokens all tokens happening right now but what i every time that i see like for example when the token uh 10x everybody's celebrating everybody's happy and they say well look we're doing great in spite of the bear market in spite of everything we're you know people are happy we're doing great but as soon as the price falls like we see here and i'm just using love hate you know as an example but this happens with a lot of other tokens okay so i'm just i'm not like just picking on them but i'm just using them as an example here but whenever we see a price drop like this a fall you know or a dump i guess um we start seeing a whole bunch of like uh comments and excuses saying well it's because of the bear market so that's one of the popular uh, excuses that i hear around being thrown around in the comments and social media and videos saying that oh this is happening because we're in a bear market and some uh another excuse that some people say is that oh it's because of the paper hands that's why it's going down people are selling and other excuses would be uh, like, well, you didn't do enough research and that's why you're, you know, you're selling because you don't believe on the long term of this project and stuff like that. And some people may even say, well, this is a good thing. This is going down because we're, you know, the project is cleaning out the house. It's having like a like a spring cleaning sort of thing, right? That uh, is getting rid of all the paper hands and only the diamond hands are staying. And, uh, you know, whatever, whatever it is that's happening right now, you know, the cause of this i just find it to be very interesting um all the different excuses or uh try to explain you know the cause of this and another popular uh comment or excuse that i hear being thrown around is that well you know if you want to gamble then go to a casino you know that, like this is not a casino and um yeah to an extent i guess it could say sort of true but we need to understand the, dif the different levels of investment because some may argue that investing is gambling. Investing is a form of gambling. And like I said, that is true to an extent. It all really depends on what type of investment you're doing and how to mitigate those losses or what, or what is considered high risk and low risk investments. Okay, so just to give an, an example here, when you're investing, uh, let's say a low, uh, to like a low risk investment would be like real estate, for example. Okay, yeah, there's a high upfront cost normally for that uh, to invest, but it tends to be more towards the safe side. Now, can you lose on real estate? Yes, definitely. I mean, just look at what happened in 2008. Uh, you know, with the housing crashing, uh, you know, thing that happened. Um, so yeah, yes, it can happen, but it tends to. Uh, normally go up in value you know the appreciation of the home uh, properties then then it then to go down all right so there are cases where the price does drop but it's very rare and the probabilities of that happens uh, to that ha to of that happening sorry is very low so just um you know those are things to consider when it comes to those type of investment now moving on to another type of investment as well is like uh commerce or business or e-commerce selling a product or service so it has this risk yes it does but it's not as high of a risk compared to like other examples that i'm going to show here if you open up a business just like real estate it may involve or require a high cost investment up front you need to pay something up front you know you need to invest on buying products the supplier and other stuff and setting up the shipping if you're going to ship things out like if you're doing e-commerce drop shipping and all this stuff yes it may uh require you know uh to pay a lot of money up front but uh you can make money doing that as well and the risk also is i guess like a gambling aspect of this is that if you you don't sell your product nobody's buying it um, then that's when you're losing your investment 
aka you know your loss on the game on the gambling i guess aspect of the investment so yes so i i understand that now uh, another type of investment it will be stocks uh index funds and all that stuff so yes uh, you could make money off of that and you don't need to you really don't need to start you don't need that much money but um, again the risk is that since we're talking about uh, stocks and uh index and all that stuff then there's still a risk that it can fall and we've seen that happen with like tesla uh with like facebook social media and other companies that they were doing really really great but all of a sudden the value just drops um and so um again uh stocks um it is high risk but it's um it's higher risk compared to like real estate and business investment okay so uh just keep that like in a spectrum of uh of uh risk i would say real estate is more in the low then we have business investment which is uh like low high i guess and then we have uh stocks and index funds uh you know somewhere in the middle and now let's now let's move on to the, like the really high risk of stuff okay and then bring and that's going to bring us here all right to crypto there's also high and low risk all right so one of the uh i guess safer investments i guess i guess uh, is still high risk okay uh compared to all the rest real estate business uh stocks index and stuff the next one uh that is sort of in the safer side is bitcoin and ethereum simply because they're the og they have been around longer and people tend to like trust these more often okay um now uh, we see here that Bitcoin has a drop in value and Ethereum as well, uh, like right here. But um, Bitcoin and Ethereum, compared to all the rest, okay, they have to, you know, relatively uh, maintain its value for a long time. They have been around, so people trust them. Uh, but again, it is still high risk, okay, but not as high compared to the other cryptocurrencies such as meme coins, okay, or altcoins or tokens. But the point is this: saying, telling somebody that you haven't done enough research, that don't expect expect this to go up or, or or that this is a part of the process if you want to 10x if you want to make money well then go to a casino go to like do gambling stuff you're placing the wrong expectations on this i don't think that's the right thing to say in my opinion simply because there was all this hype going around uh, a certain project and it's going to create you know some sort of uh, I guess expectations on those investors or holders mind. And so, you know, that's, that's just my opinion and feel free to share your thoughts. What do you guys think about this as well? Um, but you know, yes, it is true. We need to do our own research. We need to do our, you know, we need to do our own thing. Okay. We need to be diligent on this investment. And what I try to do, okay. Is that I'm already prepared. Okay. I'm already prepared mentally in my mind. So this is my mindset on my trading strategies for pre-sales and if you guys want to learn my strategy you guys can go check out this video it's going to be up here in the corner it's going to show up or down in the description so my strategy okay is very similar to like somebody who plays poker okay somebody who plays uh blackjack or even those uh sports betting things okay now just to be clear okay uh i'm not condoning uh any uh those things i'm not telling you guys to go do that no 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 um, what I'm trying to say is that you, you guys need to be prepared to lose on some of these, uh, you know, purchases. You guys need to be prepared that on some of them you're going to lose and on some other ones you're going to win. But the net goal is to overall be in the positive, be in the green and not in the red to win overall. So let's say out of 10 investments, out of 10 tokens that you buy that you win like six of them. So in six, you made money and on four, you lost money. Or maybe you only won on four, okay? And you lost six, okay? Let's flip it, all right? But on those four, you made enough money that was able to cover the losses of the other six investments or purchases, okay? Kind of going a little bit back about the uh, casino and gambling uh, comparison of this. In my opinion, I think that investing is a form of gambling. The only difference is that uh, when you're doing straight up gambling like casino poker you know there's a high risk of you losing your money well with this type of investment uh there is a little bit less uh, uh, chances of you losing compared okay comparing this with like casino and uh gambling and stuff like that or poker uh, blackjack or whatever okay or uh sports betting so just keep that in mind okay but again this is not financial advice it's just my opinion all right um but yeah so what i try to do what i try to aim for is this like 
uh, I try to uh, recover my initial investment, which I think is very, very important. So I try to, uh, uh, let's say if I put in $100, once I have like 150, I try to recover $100 or $120 and I already made like $20 profit and then anything else I leave on here, okay, it's just play money. It's just money from the game. If it goes up, great. I'll be taking little portions of that as along the way. And if it drops, well, I wasn't affected. Why? Because I didn't lose my initial investment. So I wouldn't take it as a loss. I just didn't make that much profit, but I made, you know, something. Um, but that's normally my strategy. And like I said, I go uh, with that more in detail. Uh, and that video is down in the description section down below. If you guys want to go check it out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to share, share with you guys this. Um, and other prices at point triple zero eleven five which is pretty much a stage five so basically anybody who bought this token from stage five and above okay stage five all the way to stage eight or and above you're pretty much at a loss at this point and anybody who bought from stage one all the way to like stage four technically right now you are still in a win okay you haven't lost anything because you're still barely barely uh doing well especially if you're in stage four. Okay. But, uh, once it starts dropping into your, uh, uh, area, your range, then you're going to start feeling the loss. All right. Um, so I just wanted to like, uh, share my thoughts about this and what I think, uh, you, you know, when it comes to like pre-sales and stuff like that, um, yes, you can make money and everything, but you just got to know what you're getting yourself into and have a strategy in place. Don't just buy the token because, uh, of the hype or just because of the roadmap, the promises, you have to be prepared, you know, that if it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't turn out to work, it doesn't go as planned pretty much. It doesn't give the, um, the, what you call it, the results you're looking for, then you're, you're prepared to like take a loss, you know, because, um, that's just how this game is played. And unfortunately, just like any uh, place, okay, whether that's in a casino, whether that's in like those uh, coin machines, right, where you like those slots machines or, you know, whatever gambling game there is, you need to understand one thing, okay, that the house always wins. The house always wins. That's how they keep their lights on. That's how they, they're, they, they're able to still be in business because if the players always wins, guess what? They wouldn't be up in business, okay? The sports betting uh, website or whatever, they will go down. Uh, the, uh, you know, those uh, poker games, blackjack or whatever, they will go down and they just wouldn't be able to maintain business because it's costing more than what they are making profits of. So the house always wins. And the same thing goes with pre-sales. Who wins at the end of the day? The house, okay? The creator of the token, they always win, okay? They're the ones getting the majority of those funds to, you know, hopefully they can invest it on the project um, and you know, to, you know, what, whatever they have on the roadmap and actually develop something that is useful with utility, but they are the ones that win at the end of the day of the pre-sales. But yeah, there you go. Uh, share your thoughts down below and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.